What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, Crypto Warriors, it's Sergeant Crypto back at it again. Today is Monday, April 8th, 2019. A part of all I earn is mine to keep. The Richest Man in Babylon, a great book about wealth building, about saving, and how to budget and manage your wealth and grow your wealth. Great book. Yeah, a part of all you earn is yours to keep. Remember that. Let's get into it. This is coming out of uh, News BTC. Bitcoin projected as a solution to ongoing private pension crisis. Private pension fund managers should consider dipping their toes into Bitcoin, believes Mark Yusko. The Morgan Creek Digital co-founder lately projected the cryptocurrency as a mean to balance the risk associated with private pension funds. The recommendation came after the pension industry posted its second worst performance since 1950 in the fourth quarter of 2018, exposing millions of retirees to a financially unstable future. This is his tweet. Pensions have precisely wrong asset allocations at the precisely wrong time again. Things will get truly ugly with, with regards to funding levels and ability to honor commitments when valuations mean revert. So here, here it is. This is why Warren Buffett 10 years ago now, I think, made the, that million dollar bet with a, you know any fund manager from Wall Street that basically the, the premise of the bet was if he invested money in the S&P 500, he guaranteed that it will outperform any fund manager over the next 10 years and you know a million dollars that they put up a million dollars and a million million dollars will go to, to, to charity one fund manager pick um, took up the bet and obviously lost and here it is in this graphic in this chart it's showing that if you just invest invest in the S&P 500 on your own do it on your own you will outperform these quote-unquote professionals just investing on your own learning to do everything on your own taking your responsibility for your own retirement for your own funds it is not it may seem scary at first but trust me once you learn about it and, and learn what to do no one is saying that you have to die, deep dive Shit, just investing in, in the S&P I'm excuse my language but you know just investing in S&P 500 alone would set you, set you apart from the quote unquote professionals who have been robbing us blind with their mutual funds and their you know fees and all these other sorts of um, uh, investment vehicles that they make up to 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 help us the regular people investing on your own learn it it's uh, very important but also just taking you know one percent. You know, and I've told this to my private trading client, you know, taking 1% of your net worth and investing in Bitcoin will be a great hedge against something going wrong with, with the equities market. It's, you know, it, it can't keep going a, a, a bull run forever. It's been running up and up and up and up for the past 10 years. And it has to come down at some point. Everything that goes up must come down. 1% into Bitcoin is 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 not a bad, bad thing all right and here here it is coming from his partner you know the statement was further clarified by yoska's partner at morgan creek and a renowned renowned bitcoin bull anthony Pomp pompliano in his recently published newsletter pomp wrote that a majority of private pension funds were highly concentrated on equities he named japan japan's government pension pension investment fund the world's largest pension fund for keeping 50% of their assets in global equities. As a result, the fund had already lost $136 billion in quarter four, leading to a 9.1% quarter loss. One of the most conservative capital allocators in the world has a portfolio that is constructed in such a way that they experience uncommon levels of volatility and almost a double digit percentage loss percentage, I'm sorry, of their assets in 90 days, allocating 1% to Bitcoin and this you know this, this is where I got it from from pump 
you know, allocating 1% to Bitcoin. I have family members that are retired right now. And, you know, I'm, I'm telling them, pretty much begging them, like, hey, take 1% of what you have in your pension fund and put it in Bitcoin. It will save you some butt hurt later on down the road. To think that we can depend on the government, to think that we can depend on our pension funds to do the right thing and they have that they have our best interests at heart is you know very irresponsible to think that they have our best interests at heart and you know they don't at the end of the day they have uh, a job to do which is to make money for themselves not really for their for the pensions and the people who depend on these pensions they have a job to do which is to collect a percentage of you know fees and things of that nature and it's not to look out for the best interests of the people who have these money in their pension next fund manager bitcoin becoming a hedge against irresponsible banks this is coming out of the bitcoinists oh, damn bitcoin's up to 5300 so here we go bitcoin is becoming a safe haven travis kling chief investment officer at Iki Guy Asset Management believes that more people are becoming open to the idea of Bitcoin being a haven from uncertainties in mainstream markets. So we're just gonna go straight to his quotes. Uh, it's Bitcoin become a hedge against irresponsible monetary and f fiscal policy. We had the Fed do a complete U-turn into dovish mode. I had to look that word up, dovish. It basically means Mitch, into Mitch mode. <laughs> then everyone else followed Euro European Central Bank, Bank of Japan. We now have this set up where they, central banks, have become politicized both in the US and globally. It's the new world we are living in. Look at what's happening with monetary fiscal policies. As the US policy isn't nearly as wrecked as EU, Japan, and China, close your eyes and imagine the next five to ten years do you really think these policies policy experiments are going to end well and what policy experiments is he talking about qe quantitative easing the money printing and he's stating here that you know you never win betting against the fed the trend in bitcoin's price flipped from beer to bull once the fed said it would it ease off tightening and engage in permanent money printing permanent qe this is wealth confiscation by the bank cartels to keep their insolvent balance sheets from imploding the impact of bitcoin and gold will be moving to new all-time high as safe haven money pours in if you've been watching my videos if you're a part of uh, my subscribership <laughs> and you've been watching my videos you know that I've been stating that the debt that w we are in not just here in the United States but in, in, around the world is something that cannot be sustained and the constant printing of money the constant printing of money isn't going to be isn't going to end well the video I made I think last week sometime where former Fed chairman Alan Greenspan said the United States could pay any debt that it wants by just printing more money <sighs> I don't even know where to start man this is just utter nonsense we're just printing monopoly money now and yes Bitcoin is a safe haven cryptocurrencies are a safe haven gold is a safe haven and precious metal if you think that not investing in Bitcoin or that Bitcoin is you know a Ponzi scheme or Bitcoin is only for illicit activities you need to wake up man and, and really you know open your eyes because it's not going to end well basically all right uh, to avoid uh, to avoid negative impact of negative rates and debt monetization the likes of Kaiser and Kling say people are moving their wealth into Bitcoin this trend could contribute to Bitcoin reaching a new all-time high so there you have it the wealthy knows what's happening so they're moving their wealth into Bitcoin and it's unconfiscatable having gold and precious metals is a good hedge and things of that nature however we saw what happened right after the Great Depression that they confiscated gold from the people it was illegal for the um, citizens to own gold they've done it once already you can't take away your Bitcoin they cannot come and take, take away your Bitcoin once you, you have the private keys next this is talking about the debt Bitcoin fever driven by stocks uh, pessimism as global debt hits 243 trillion dollars I, mean, I don't even know what that means uh, 43 trillion dollars is this uh, wow so here it is again from the Bitcoinist the global debt has reached at the astronomical amount of uh, 243 trillion dollars 
and now the stock market is becoming gloomier. Against this background, some investors and fi financial specialists are turning their, their focus to Bitcoin and speculating about the causes of the renewed interest in the cryptocurrency. Is mountain debt causing pessimisms about stocks and spiking Bitcoin fever? Global debt has increased over 50% since the last financial debacle. According to the Institute of Inter International Finance, Although the global debt slowed sharply in 2018, the global debt has now accumulated a global debt mountain. The quote-unquote bail-in 10 years ago, banks were too big to fail, did nothing. It only <laughs> got us into more debt. It only helped them out. It only helped the bankers out, the likes of the Jamie Dimons and the, you know, whatever other CEOs and C-suite people of these different banks and financial institution the money printing only helped them it didn't help us and now we're in more debt than we were 10 years ago so if it, if we were supposed if printing all that money and they were too big to fail and saving them was you know going to help it obviously didn't man you know and this is a tweet again you know follow me on twitter man at sergeant crypto 99 and i just you know i retweeted it and what i stated you know to the to the governments and central banks of the world, you, you're doing it all wrong. Long Bitcoin, short bankers. There, you, there you have it, man. Yo, give me a follow. Like I said, at Sartre Crypto 99. This debt crisis that we're in isn't going to go away by printing more money. Though, according to the great Alan Greenspan, the man that ran America from like the 1980s until the early 2000s, right? It's not going away by just printing more money. The governments of the world are turning their backs on the U.S. dollar. We and again, I'm re re reiterating this. BRICS, Google, Google it. Do your own research. D Y O R. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Almost said South America, but South Africa nations. They're trading oil in Chinese yuan, which is backed by gold. Russia is buying gold. Russia is buying Bitcoin. Russian oligarchs. They're buying Bitcoin. This way, they can't. The the U.S. government and SWIFT can't. Um, put sanctions on that can't freeze their accounts everybody is turning away from the US dollar because we just keep printing more and more we really have to write our politicians tell them that yo they, we need to stop this. I, I don't know something has to be done and I definitely think for me personally I'm definitely hedging against this money printing and this debt crisis by getting more Bitcoin that's all I have for today as always thank you for watching thank you for the support Smash up the likes, share, retweet, you know, share on Facebook. And again, thanks for the support. Like, it's your boy, Sergeant Crypto, and I'm out. Peace. Bye, Bitcoin.